that I was overworked and underappreciated. I realized that my day job wasn't going to be forever. What if it didn't work out? It's not like I could just go back to the job that I just quit. What if I completely failed? Before I was hosting properties, my life like really sucked. I basically hated it. I worked a horrible, horrible corporate job for like 60 hours a week doing work that I couldn't care less about. Uh, I was good at it, but I really didn't care about it. The people I worked with, they were awesome. They were really great. But the work itself, it was like soul sucking. And my entire life was spent working or like doing chores or random things. The creative side of myself that you see today had no room for expression because I was constantly like picking up the slack for flawed systems and broken processes. It was honestly soul sucking. And the worst part was that when I traveled to get a break from it, all of it, I still had to pay my bills. Or did I? I lived alone, basically, so my house was empty when I wasn't there. I wasn't using it, so it made sense to me to find a way to supplement my mortgage payments, which is when everything started to fall into place. So I did my research, I did tons of research, and after weighing the pros and cons, I realized that it might make the most sense for me to take the jump and host properties myself full time. But with that jump came a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty and perhaps most importantly, risk. Was I going to be able to support myself? What if it didn't work out? It's not like I could just go back to the job that I just quit. What if I completely failed? Who knows what would have happened if I failed? I bet on myself and it turned out to be a pretty damn good bet. Plus, I love my life too much for something like work to take me out. I decided to transition into becoming a real estate investor and a host, which thinking about it now was completely crazy, but it's been so fun. And in doing so, I came across quite a few people in the hosting industry that did it full time, which honestly was mind blowing to me. I distinctly remember being really fascinated with that idea and learning about how they did it. How were they able to take hosting and real estate investing and do it full time? I was fascinated by it. And when I came across that point, hosting and investing in real estate became a source of joy. Actually, I get emotional just thinking about it. I became fulfilled and it gave me a sense of purpose. Short term renting and all things related to it became a growing hobby that gave me a lot of freedom. I met tons of people. I had lots of fun. I still have lots of fun and I was making money, <laughs> a lot of income. Uh, and it gave me the control, the ability basically to control my time with that income. I wanted to do more of it. You know, who wouldn't? But my day job really prevented me from giving that time to my business. It prevented me from doing it time and time again. And that's when I realized it was time to prioritize the thing that gave me the most freedom and the most joy. Once I made the choice, to trust myself and power through my decision, I accepted nothing but success. There was no turning back. What it meant was that it was time for me to quit my day job. And as nerve wracking and intense as it was, and I don't recommend it to anyone unless you have a plan, it was too late to turn back. I fucking had to make it work, for lack of better words. I just had to make it work. There was no better action I could take but to focus on my own happiness and my own well being, of which I was not getting from my day job and I never would. So that was a decision that I made. I focused on myself and what gave me joy and I quit my day job. And the first thing I did as a CEO of my own company was take a day off. Yeah, I was really tired. Um, you know, juggling both of those worlds, it was exhausting. So I mean, you know, let's be real here. Anyone who had been in that position and did it differently, you guys, honestly, you probably missed out. You know, give yourself some breaks and approve your own vacations. You know, every time, whenever you feel like you want to go, go away somewhere or go on vacation, just go ahead and approve it. <laughs> so, but anyways, after that short break, uh, it was time for me to get to work. I was able to handle things on my own when I was hosting as a side hustle. But now I needed more hands on deck because I quickly realized that the way I was scaling, I was going to need help. So I used my corporate experience and my research supported the idea that I needed to build up systems and processes for literally everything and develop a team to run them. That's the only way that was gonna work. So what does that mean? It means that over time, I had to delegate work to other people who were actually better at it than I was, which was really hard for me to understand at first. So that came with 
a learning curve naturally, right? But it's 100% worth trading my corporate job for something that I have a little more control over. And now I'm surrounded by intelligent people, really smart people, hardworking people who believe in me as a leader, which is so important for my own motivation and ability to lead them effectively. I need people that believe in me and I have that. I'm so thankful. I'm allowed to fail and learn, right? Failure is okay. It is a tool that teaches you how to do better. And nowadays my job is so much less stressful. I mean, I took a phone call at the park today and I was able to schedule a call with my COO, my chief of operations at a time that works for me so I can finish my workout, right? I love working out, it's what I do. And basically, I'm in control of my own schedule, which is what I've never dreamed of having. And I can trust that my team will manage things, the day-to-day -day things, even when I'm not there, and they'll do it reliably and consistently every time. So I can't lie, um, it took me some time to get here, right? Everything takes time. But if you're on the fence about it, just do it, right? Stop thinking about what you wanna do and analyzing every possible thing that could happen or you'll never get past that step. You'll be so stuck and time will keep passing by. Please don't let fear and doubt keep you stuck somewhere that you hate. There's no reason why you have to stay somewhere that you hate. Let your heart take over for a while instead of your brain, right? Think about things, yes, plan, but actually do it. Do what makes you happy. Set up time frames for you to learn something new before you take action, right? So commit to a time, I'm gonna learn this during this time and then I'm gonna do it. So once that time frame is up, take the action. I've been where you are now and I promise that no matter what emotions you're feeling, it's possible to push that to the side and move, make movements. Take that first step. If you need to find yourself someone in the industry that you can trust, you know, maybe someone that's already your friend, someone you've talked to before, find someone that you can trust that's already done what you're trying to do, right? Someone who's already leading a team, has their own business. If you can find a coach such as myself, I can offer you guidance to help you through the fear that comes throughout the process while also pointing you in the right direction. So reach out to me at the link in the description and I'll help you. I'll tell you the story about why I started to host properties in hopes that it'll help you make the decision to bet on yourself. For me, that meant that I had to learn a lot. I had to get out of my own way and realize that I need to trust other people to help me. I had to delegate tasks that I was nervous to delegate because I thought they were gonna be jacked up, but I had to accept that I was my own worst enemy, right? I was preventing myself from growing. And most importantly, I had to realize that it was okay to fail. Right? As long as you don't make the same mistake twice. So failures, again, they're tools that teach you things. How to not make the same mistakes over again. You have to fail in order to grow and to learn. My life is so much better now. Yes, there's still problems because problems are a part of reality. Right? Every human experiences problems. But we are problem solvers. Right? As a business person, as a leader, you are problem solvers. And so is your team. If there's one piece of advice I could leave you with, it would be just to start. You're gonna make mistakes along the way. There's no way you're not gonna make mistakes. And it's natural to do that. You're supposed to make mistakes and learn from them. But you'll never learn if you don't take the first step. You will never learn. If this video helped motivate you to take the first step, then make sure you subscribe.